Okay. Scout's on. Everyone's got their phone off, right? Okay. Very good. Now, as a reminder, members of the audience are asked to refrain from entering or leaving the room during the contest. After the contest, please do not leave the room until it's determined that all ballots have been collected. Check to see if any devices, such as cell phones, does anyone actually carry a pager anymore? <laughs> <laughs> we need an update, Madam Elgett. Needs to be turned off. All right, now I would like to announce the speaking order for the humorous speech contest. The humorous speech contestant number one, Beth O'Donnell. Humorous speech contestant number one, Beth O'Donnell. Humorous speech contestant number two, Steve Serby. Contestant number two, Steve <laughs> Serby. Contestant number three, Kyle Knapp. Contestant number three, Kyle Knapp. <coughs> Contestant number four, Sadia Covert. Contestant number four, <coughs> Sadia Covert. And contestant number five, Bob Roman. Contestant number five, Bob Roman. We will now proceed with the humorous speech contest. And like before, there will be one minute of silence before our first contestant is called up, and then one minute of silence between each contestant. Timekeepers, when I advise you to do so, please let me know when it has been one minute by signaling with me with the green light. And after all contestants have spoken, the judges will be given all the time in the world, including until tomorrow morning if we need to, to make sure that all the ballots have been collected. Thank you, timers. Contestant number one, Beth O'Donnell, picture perfect. Picture perfect, Beth O'Donnell. Everywhere. 
My son's preference is a pacifier. Hey, Patrick. Hey, where's your pacifier go? Lost it again? Oh, hold on. Um. <laughs> All better. <laughs> the five minute ride to the photo store is going flawlessly. Everybody's happy. The sun is shining, the afternoon traffic is light, and we're right on. What's that? Oh, Aaron. Honey, it's okay. Everybody gets car sick now and then. Oh. <laughs> we just wipe up those carrots. Oh. <laughs> Have you ever bitten off more than you can chew? On a daily basis, my twins spend more time in their stroller than they do playing on the floor. That is why. I bought the Humvee of Australia, <laughs> Eddie Bauer edition, with four-wheel drive. <laughs> Just try maneuvering this thing through a skinny retail door. <laughs> no, this is never going to fit. I'm going to have to do this whole song. <laughs> <laughs> I carried you babies for nine months. <laughs> What's two minutes? <laughs> I can feel my forehead start to sweat. My hair is sticking to my neck. Oh, my duffel bag, I, I mean my diaper bag, is now spilling two babies worth of supplies at my feet. Formula, diapers, and wipes. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> Calm down. I got this. Inside the studio, Twin A is positioned neatly on the photo riser. Twin B, that's right, my kids don't have names right now. <laughs> Twin B is positioned right next door. Uh uh. Get back here. Hey, come on now. <laughs> Sit. Sit. Stay. <laughs> yes, they're babies, not puppies. <laughs> okay, guys. All you gotta do is listen to the photographer and smile. Smile. Anyone? Smile? <laughs> oh, Erin, Erin, no, no, no. Shh, shh. Honey, it's okay. Mommy's right here. Honey, if you don't stop. Patrick, not you too. <laughs> Work with me. Work with me. Please, give me a break. Oh. The sound of two babies crying is spreading throughout the studio like diaper rash. I can feel my own tears about to cascade down my cheeks like spilt milk. I said to the photographer, help me. I have an idea. Take their clothes off. We'll take some pictures of them that way. What? He wants me to take off their matching sailor suits? The ones I spent 51 weeks shopping for? <laughs> Naked pictures? I guess it is their birthday. <laughs> With no other solution in sight, and feeling like I'm on a freight train heading right towards Krabby Land, off come their clothes. Gone, gone with that movie. And out with that pacifier, while the photographer snaps frame after frame of pictures. After what seems like just five minutes, he says, that's a wrap. You'll have proofs in a week. That's it? We're done? Oh. The kids and I make it home. I'm emotionally exhausted. And I'm physically sore. It feels like labor pains again? <laughs> How can two one-year-olds run me ragged? I'm a working mom. I own my own business. Twice as nice. Ugh. More like double trouble. <laughs> Have you ever had to swallow your pride? Be content with what life gives you. If a picture paints a thousand words. What can I say about one in a million photographs? <laughs> to me, this is picture perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. 
your timer, and then we have one minute of silence, please. Thank you, Mr. Tyner. Humorous speech contestant number two, Steve Servi, Social Security. We are here. We are here to help you. We are here to help you. Sorry, Social Security. We are here to help you, Steve Servi. Social Security, we are here to help you, but just try to get a hold of us. <laughs> Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, I am a Social Security payee, which legally I have the right to control the money for a disabled <coughs> relative of mine. Basically what that means is he works a part-time job and also collects a Social Security check. As such, I need to report his wages every single month within six days so they can adjust his Social Security check. I've done this for years, and Social Security has come up with this great automated wage reporting system. It's simple. Pick up the phone, you dial the number, and you go through a whole bunch of prompts as they validate that I am the legal payee for my relatives. There's always one question the voice response system gets stumped on. They say, please say and spell your last name. Servi, C-E-R-V-E. -E. Voice response system says, did you say serve, C E? R B E. Yes. <laughs> then there's a pause. The voice response system says, "Please say and spell your last name." <laughs> then do it again. Serve. C E R V E. The voice response system says, did you say serve? C E R E E? Yes! <laughs> and the voice response system says, I did not record your response. Please call back another day. Please <laughs> <laughs> on me. I need to report these wages within six days. I called back go through the same thing. I did that for three solid days, got the same response, and hung up on me every single time. I'm like, I got three more days reporting this way. What am I going to do? Thank goodness for Google. I said, you know what? I'm going to Google the Social Security office and call them directly. Now, I live in Vernon Hills. That's Lake County. So the, the local Social Security office is in Waukegan. I get on the phone, I dial Social Security, I get a message. You have reached the Lake County Social Security office. We service over 50 million customers. I'm sorry, all of our agents are currently in business. Please call back another day. Click it! <laughs> I had no way to opt out. To, I pushed zero. Operator, operator, nothing. I had no way to opt out. 
called back again, a second, a third, a fourth time. Two more days! That's day five! <laughs> I have one more day to report his wages! I call Google. Google's a great thing. I'm going to dial the National Social Security Office. I get the phone number. I wait an hour and a half on the phone before I get a live body. And I said, listen, I'm trying to report these wages. I have one more day to report them. I called the automated voice system. It hung up on me. I called the local office. It hung up on me. Can you help me? No! She can't help me. She says, I need to call the local office. I did that. She said, did you try to fax? Great idea. Great idea. I'll do a fax, the old fashioned way. She gave me the fax number. I went home that night, typed up a beautiful one page document explaining what was going on. Went into work the very next day. The first thing I did, I walked over to the fax machine, put it in, dialed the number, hit go. Away it went. I went back to my desk and I worked about 15, 20 minutes. I figured, you know what? I'm going to go back and just to make sure it confirmed that it went through. I walk back to that fax machine. There's a confirmation sheet. I pull it out. I scan it. There's a fax number with NG. No, good. I didn't go through. I had to fax it again two, three, four times. NG every single time. This is day six, the last day to report the wages. I did everything. I dialed the automated system and hung up on me again. I called the office of Waukegan. They hung up on me. The fax wouldn't go through. 12 o'clock, day six. I finally called the Waukegan office. A body answers the phone. A voice, a sweet voice. And I said, are you real? <laughs> she said, yes. You're not a recording? She said, no. I said, please, dear God, don't hang up on me for six days trying to report his wages. Can you help me? She said, yes, I can. <laughs> Got the wages reported. Everything was fine. Social Security, we are here to help you. But just try and get a hold of us. <laughs> May we have one minute of silence while the judges judge their balance. Thank you, Mr. Timer. Humorous speech, contestant number three. Kyle Knapp, speed dating 101. Speed dating 101, Kyle Knapp. Mr. Contest here, fellow Toastmasters, and most welcome guests. When I was single and had a hard time getting a date, which has been most of my life, <laughs> actually it was about 10 years ago I thought I'd try speed dating to meet someone new. For those of you who are not familiar, speed dating was developed in New York by a rabbi. He came up with the idea to get 15 or 20 men and 15 or 20 women together to have intensive one-on-one, six-minute dates to find a partner. 
there's actually some psychological research behind that to support it. It only takes us about six minutes to decide, do we want to be romantic partners with someone? Do we want to be friends? Do we want to do business together, or do we want to get away from this person right now? <laughs> so there's some, some research behind it. I went into my speed dating event with a plan, because I wanted to find out as much as I could about my speed dates. I always can't stand the question, so what do you do? Because it tells just a little bit about you. I want to get to know somebody as a whole person. So I came up with three questions. Number one, what book have you read lately? Shows a little intellectual curiosity. <coughs> You talk about comic books, that doesn't count. <laughs> Number two, what do you do to keep physically fit? I'm very active, I want to make sure that I don't get involved with a couch potato. Number three, where have you always wanted to go but you've never had the chance to visit? And if you say Florida because you've never heard of Fiji, you don't have the sense of adventure that I do. I get to my speed dating event, I sit down across from my first date, Abby. I know, the first thing that came to my mind was young Frankenstein and Abby Normal. <laughs> Turns out she was a little Abby Normal, you'll find out why in a minute. <laughs> Trying to make a little small talk, she wouldn't have it. She wouldn't say anything to me. She was waiting for that bell to ring to start the six minutes. Finally the bell rings and she looks at me and she says, So Kyle, what do you do? I said, I'm an immigration lawyer. And she went, oh. Well, do you have any questions for me? And I said, well, as a matter of fact, Abby Normal, I do. <laughs> Question number one, what book have you read lately? And she said, oh, I don't really like to read. <laughs> hey, how about uh, physical fitness? What do you do to keep fit? And I went to the gym one time, but I didn't like it. I'd rather just sit at home and watch movies. <laughs> Batting average is not looking good here. Third question, I say, tell me, where have you always wanted to go? Surely you have a sense for travel. She kind of looks down, and she kind of looks up, and then she's looking around, and she looks me right in the eye and says, I always wanted to go to Florida. <laughs> Ring that bell, I'm ready to move. <laughs> Get to the next one, Barb. Barb, of course, starts out, so Kyle, what do you do? And I said, I'm an immigration lawyer. Oh, well, I'm a pharmacist. And I think we're exceptionally matched, and I'll tell you why. All, deal, all day long, I deal with medicinal equivalencies. If a patient comes in with a prescription, I can evaluate if there's a generic equivalent that's a lesser price. And here's why I think you and I are equivalent. For law school, <laughs> you had to get a graduate degree. For pharmacy, it used to be that you could be, get an undergraduate degree and be a pharmacist. Now you must have a graduate degree. Your job requires a license. My job requires a license. So we are very equivalently matched. <laughs> and I said to myself, that's about the worst pickup line I've ever heard. <laughs> In any event, I was sure that she was not the right prescription for me. So I was ready to go to my next date. Joy. I get to Joy and she's kind of hunched over the table. She's drinking a beer and she's just finishing a beer as the server comes by and she hurriedly finishes the beer and puts it on the tray and says, I'll bring me another one because I'm going to need it by the time you get back. <laughs> I'm thinking with Joy, I'm going to need to mix it up a little bit. So I said to Joy, I said, tell me, Joy, how long have you had a drinking problem? <laughs> no, I did not say that to her. <laughs> she actually beat me to the punch. She looked at me and she says, I like guys in glasses. Mm. And I like guys who wear suits. You look real cute in your suit there. <laughs> and you look like you understand the stock market. <laughs> and I like guys who understand the stock market. <laughs> then she went on to tell me how her brother had worked for Campbell's Soup and recommended that she buy Campbell's Soup stock, which she did. And it went up in value. And then it split into double. And then that went up in value. And then she sold it. And she was very keen to explain to me the whole evening this phenomenally new market, re market investment strategy of buy low, sell high. <laughs> it was riveting. <laughs> and I thought rather than go into my questions about reading and working out and travel, I would just let her educate me about investment <laughs> strategy. And she was kind of touching my hand as the night went on and kind of making comments about being in a suit and wearing glasses. And it was clear to me that she was trying to get to third base and as much as I like to go to the ballpark, I was not interested in season tickets with a drunk speed dater. <laughs> Finally, at the end of the night, you fill out a sheet about who you liked, who you didn't like, and then you can go on a real date. I did that. I get to the restaurant, and my real date I went with, she didn't remember what I looked like, I didn't remember what she looked like, so we both asked for a table, and then we get caught up there, and we're kind of, are you, are you, yeah, okay. <laughs> so we went and sat down, and she was, not what I had remembered. Uh, I was trying to rack my brain because it was like pulling teeth to get conversation out of her. 
she was somewhat of a simpleton. She was dropping food on herself, and I couldn't remember what she read or if she worked out or if she wanted to go anywhere, but it just wasn't happening. So finally, the night went to a conclusion, and I, I sent her a note afterwards. I said, hey, you know, I had a nice time. Not really, but I just wasn't feeling it. I hope you find somebody. And she writes back immediately. Oh my gosh, what was it? I had a really nice time. I really liked you. I'd like to see you again. Was it something I did wrong? What happened? And I said, well, honestly, I thought you were the good looking one that I picked. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> I took the high road. And I know what some of you are probably thinking. Gee, Kyle, your uh, speed dating sure sounds like a bust. And I can only say, well, yes, okay, I'm still single. But I've got a lot of great material for Toastmasters. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Contest. Okay, okay, Sadia, calm down. 
Alright, look submissive. Alright, got my scarf on. Okay, I can do this. I've done job interviews, I've done college interviews. This is nothing. I could do this. It's just a guy that I'm going to spend the rest of my life with, that's all. <laughs> so my suitor came in, we greeted each other. Hello, hello. And all of a sudden, I looked like I had a facial tag. I was looking up, I was looking down. I was looking on the side, to my right side. I put my hand out, put my hand here, <laughs> my arena, I didn't know what to do. And my suitor kept looking at me, and he smiled and nodded. And we all know what that means. They're kind of crazy. <laughs> I still wonder why I was rejected. <laughs> Now my second suitor was a very interesting fellow. He was great on paper, he was 6'2", he was a doctor, he made $375,000 a year, that was his selling point. <laughs> his parents were in the intelligence, he was in the military, just a great, amazing family, right? So, we courted for four months. Now courting does not mean dating in the Pakistani culture where somebody, where the guy takes you out somewhere. It means talking on the phone. So we talked on the phone for four months. And one day, we had this really strange conversation. He called me and he said, Sadia, I need to, I need to tell you something. Okay, what is it? I wanted to let you know that this is very important to me, but I'm a registered communist. <laughs> a what? <laughs> I'm a communist. So is that like a Russian spy? No, it's not a Russian spy. It's, I'm a communist. You've heard of them before. So you're a Russian spy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that didn't really work out. So after these several failed, pathetic attempts of finding Mr. Wright, I finally found Mr. Wright in college. And I fell in love without a chaperone. <laughs> and he was great. But uh oh, there was one problem. It wasn't arranged. And he wasn't Pakistani. What was I going to do? So I told myself, hey, who said I couldn't arrange my own marriage, right? Well, everyone said I couldn't arrange my own marriage. But that didn't stop me. Me being me defied all the rules. I wanted to make my own choice, set my own destiny. I knew myself better than anybody else. So, I convinced my parents. We had a happy ending. Everything worked out at the end. I was going to marry my true love, my soulmate, Brian. And we had two beautiful children. Later on, we're still happily married. And now when people ask me, hey, you're Pakistani, right? Was your marriage arranged? And I tell them, why well, yes, it certainly was. I arranged it. Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs>
Bob Roman. Let the dating games begin. <laughs> Let the dating games begin. Bob Roman. <laughs> fellow Toastmasters and most welcome guests. I was thrust into the dating situation again when my wife and I divorced after 12 years of a happy marriage. Fortunately, I was married 22 years. <laughs> I needed to be certain as to what I wanted in a woman in a relationship, so I penned my desire. Desire number one, she must know how to clean fish. She must know how to cook fish. A special plus if she knows what a muskie is. <laughs> <laughs> Microwaving fish sticks, don't count. <laughs> Desire number two, her bank account must be larger than mine. <laughs> In this case, size does. <laughs> In desire number three, she must love fishing. Fishing for a husband doesn't count. <laughs> I've already went that route. I went on a dating site, and I was going to choose musky man as my handle, but that was already taken. So I had to settle on sexy silver fox. <laughs> so my ad is as follows. Distinguished gentleman. Successful, mature gentleman. Seeks a female 30 to 45 years old. Must know how to cook. Must love the outdoors must be willing to show me her financials. <laughs> I included a picture of myself on my head because I wanted the ladies to know exactly what you did. <laughs> After a couple of days, I went on and I had a couple of responses. The first one was from Tim. Hi, sexy silver box. Terry, 30 years old, 5'9", 145 pounds, I have brown hair and blue eyes. I'm a runner and I lift weights. That could be interesting. Now Terry didn't leave a phone number, so through emails we made arrangements to meet at her favorite restaurant. So I get to the restaurant and I asked the wait staff to direct me to Terry's table. As I'm approaching the table, I stop in my tracks. She is a he. <laughs> I sit down with the young man and proceed to tell him that this is a mistake. All the time he's telling me you know, Bob, you have sexy eyes. <laughs> and I didn't agree with him. <laughs> we, we did have a nice dinner, and we left, and I pardoned, and I, and I wished him well fishing for a husband. <laughs> the next response was a little bit better. It was from Amber. And Amber goes, hi, my name's Amber. I'm 27 years old, I'm 5'3", 103 pounds, I have black hair, brown eyes, I'm a professional woman, that's good, and she left her phone number. So I made a date for Saturday night. Oh, incidentally, she put her picture with it and then put it on there and she went, am I too young for you? Are you kidding? <laughs> <coughs> so the date night came. And so I wanted to be perfectly sure that I had everything I needed. So I went to the drugstore. And I bought a packet 
of tanning gel. <laughs> <laughs> As I was smearing the tanning gel on my face and neck, my skin started to itch. <laughs> Maybe I should have read the directions. After five minutes, zits appeared all over my face. But I had a nice looking tan. <laughs> so I got in the car, picked up Amber on time, and she was ready. In the cars we're driving, she kept looking at my face. <laughs> I bet she was admiring my nice tan. <laughs> now at the restaurant, we had a great time. She even said yes that I could answer yes to all your three desires. So when I took her home, then she told me, Bob, I had a wonderful time, but I don't think we could be a match. You're just too young looking. And I go, damn that candy jack. <laughs> so I went back on the site, and I got a message from Paul. It starts out, hi. I saw your white hair, and white mustache, that is so sexy. I'm a female, I like to dress in white, and people have a tendency to cuddle when I'm around. Well, we went on a few dates, and then later I found out her last name was Vortex. Polar Vortex from Nunchuck, Alaska. I had to break it up with her, because. She just left me cold. <laughs> so ladies, if you're interested in a successful, distinguished man like myself, why don't you check out my profile? Sexy Silver Fox. At the dating site, musky fanatics need love too. <laughs> Look for my picture. It's the one with the sexy eyes and the nice hand, face, minus the zits. <laughs> Silent for the judges to complete judging their ballots and until the ballots have been collected by the ballot, by the ballot count.
Yeah, it's been a really good contest, right? I mean, it's been a year. of the fall season, and I, and I have to tell you, it's definitely lifted the bar much, much, much higher than it's in the past, so kudos to everyone that's helped to make this happen. What I'd like to do now, instead of, in, in, instead of interviewing just one set of contestants and then another, I'd like to call all of the evaluation contestants first to line up in the order that they spoke, and immediately after that, the two humorous speech contestants right at the end, and then what I'll do is we'll go to so, first, if I may have Stephanie Williams, Bob Roman, Sadia Covert, Kyle Nam, Beth O'Donnell, and Steve Serby. I'm going to have a little bit of fun getting to know everybody that had to stay in their career. Share with us some things. So, Stephanie, how are you? Great. Very good. I'll always begin with the standard three questions. Number one, how long have you been with Toastmasters? Number two, what club are you representing? And number three, what is your educational level in Toastmasters? I'm a Tom Carter's Toastmasters. I've been in the program for about two years. And I just finished the requirements for my advanced communicator rounds. <laughs> I see a couple of things on your contestant profile that automatically jump off to me. I mean, you've held several different club officer leadership positions. You've been in VP membership, VP education. Uh, and I love how you phrase this. Your occupation is mom of two boys. I'd like to introduce you to a humor speaker of ours, Beth. Well, you've heard some of her stories. What's one of your favorite stories as a mom of two boys? So how old are they? They're three and eight. And actually, I did a speech about this because we travel a lot. We have family on the East Coast and the West Coast, so we are in planes. And traveling with them in planes is extremely challenging. And I'm <laughs> there as well. I did a tall town contest speech about that. It's crazy. But we do it anyway. We have to. So that's funny because your interests and hobbies are to travel without your kids. <laughs> <laughs> they can always take them scuba diving. Really <laughs> um, so I like your quote. Tonight, my quote, this is this is literally I'm reading this right off the bat. Tonight, my quote is, "Get out of your comfort zone, Stephanie." <laughs> so, did I tell you this, or did you make this up That's on your own? What I was saying to myself in the car ride over here: "Get out of your comfort zone." And last night when I couldn't sleep. Do you think you did? I think she did too, right?
going with Toastmasters. <laughs> you, everybody knows it's a terrific group, so everyone at Toastmasters is terrific. <laughs> <laughs> way of sharing their biggest catch. So it's honest about it. Remember, you're, you're an honest man. It's the biggest fish you've ever caught. It measured 47 and a half inches in length. It was 27 and a half pounds. Wow. Did somebody cook it and cut it for you, or did you actually stop it and put it on your own? Actually, muskies really aren't good eating fish. <laughs> it's like a whole speech right there. Right? <laughs> Calling the those that competed in both contests will be only called the once. Three standard questions. How long have you been with Toastmasters? What club are you representing? And what is your educational level? Well, uh, I represent ICN, which is the Sun Center of Naperville on Ogden Avenue. And I have been with Toastmasters since this past July. My educational goal in Toastmaster would be that I started three months ago. <laughs> now, I see someone familiar in the audience. My dad, Matthew's kind of right there, he's the president of our club. So, I, I and my mentor, actually. So he's really taught me a whole lot. Um, I give him a lot of, well, all the credit. <laughs> 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 that sounds like your dad's your favorite, which is absolutely, there's nothing wrong with that, ladies and gentlemen. Dads can have favorites, but I don't hear much, look, your mom's not here, and I can trash you on your mom. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I got permission beforehand to do that. All right, very good. And she was here the last time, unfortunately, she couldn't, she didn't feel very well today. <laughs> so, uh, when it says what inspires you the most, you know, God, my parents, my husband, and two kids, I've learned a lot through them. Share with me a story where you realize what the lesson was. Right? What do you do for your children? Well, I have a three and a half year old. She's going to be four in November, and I have a five month old. I haven't learned a whole lot from my five month old, <laughs> but from my three and a half year old, she has taught me about about life, about living it again right from the beginning. I felt like when I had her, I felt like my life, like I hit a restart button on my life. It was back to the basics, alphabet, going to the zoo, finding joy in little things in life, and that's what's most precious. It's not about having a lot of stuff or, you know, becoming this or that or whatever. It's about enjoying life and finding quality time with Let me tell you something else. <laughs> 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 I'm excited. 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 I'm exc
ladies and gentlemen. So my favorite cocktail party question, when I first started out, people would come up to me, and this conversation I could play it over and over again. I was kind of, here we go again. So people would say, so what do you do? I'm an immigration lawyer. Oh, well, that's fascinating. Where do most of your clients come from, Mexico? No, actually not. Most of my clients come from India and, and uh, China. And people say, wow, that's really interesting. And I say, no, it's not, because that's a third of the world. <laughs> Statistically, that's not interesting. So that's my favorite quote about my day. Okay. So, favorite story about my day. Kyle, you've obviously shared with us some information about your speed dating experiences. Have you looked at other opportunities to find information? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pull table topics again. <laughs> Actually, what I'm, I've been writing that speech recently got me inspired to go, because this was 10 years ago, so I'm going to go to another speed dating event here in Chicago get some more material. <laughs> no, no, speed, but I've tried other things, but I think I'm happy to want to thank you. <laughs> All right, my final question for you. Where would you like to go that you have to go? Financial analyst for BP. Yes. 
many puns that I could go in. <laughs> respectful gentlemen, can you tell me a little bit about how long you've been working in this position with ED, and what got you started down this path? I've been a financial analyst for 12 years, but I'm an engineer by trade. Engineering first, manufacturing, product service, and I got into financial analysis. It's a long story, but I don't have time for it, but I've been doing it for the past 12 years. Okay. Steve, if I'm not mistaken, you live in Vernon Hills. Ah, we're not near Vernon. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. So how, obviously, I'm assuming that it's because it's close to work. I mean, how did you, I mean, you are obviously here tonight, uh, and I don't know if any of your family members are here. Today. No. So, no. Okay. No. <clears throat> I work at BP in Warrenville. I live in Vernon Hills, work in Warrenville, but today I had a meeting in downtown Chicago. <laughs> so I drove from home to downtown to BP, office downtown Chicago, downtown I get to go an hour home again. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Dunkin' Donuts on the way, guys, for coffee. See, my last question for you is this. So, you shared with us the frustrations of having to deal with the automated service and the automated machine, because they can't understand you. Steve, if God, if a miracle was granted to you, if you had the chance to speak to the person that recorded the, that voice, that message, <laughs> yeah, the voice was very, very pleasant. <laughs> I think it, I think it angry. And the angrier I got, I think he's kind of hung up on me on purpose because I kept getting angry, even though it was a voice machine. But I just don't like automated voice. Um, if, if you have an op out, if you get an operator talk to a human body, that's different. But these guys didn't even have a chance to opt out. It was just click, done, call back again. <laughs> Okay. No, I would know. You're a nice kid. Patience. 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 Dave, thank you so much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have probably the most important announcement I've ever had to make in 43 years of being on this planet. There is a wonderful piece of costume jewelry that perhaps somebody may have lost. I know Jay, I know your I know your name. <laughs> but in case if it is belongs to you, please just come and let me know at the end. And that's it guys, let's go home. Oh I'm sorry, I, I does everybody want to hear? <laughs> well before I go any further, I would like to call up two of our dignitaries for the evening. Our again effervescent and energetic Lieutenant Governor of Education and Training, Ethel Coti. West Division Governor, Mr. Frank Hester, Okay. Thank you. Since we have our... At the church. <laughs> Since we have our Lieutenant Governor, I would like to have her say a few words first about a very important thing that's coming up because it's it's a couple days away so madam lieutenant governor let us know what this important <laughs> thing is <laughs> the sun will come out tomorrow <laughs> bet your bottom dollar when i said dollar did you think 36 if yeah. you didn't you should <laughs> that's the doors and out $36, nobody wants to hear about money that you have to pay. But seriously, recommit, let's pay those dues. They're due October 1st. I'm sure you know we have an extension. Let's not use the extension. And you're not paying the dues for the district. You're paying the dues for you and for the person next to you and behind you. We're one big Toastmasters family. Let's stay like that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Madam Lieutenant Governor.
Before we announce the winners, I just want to thank everyone, all the functionaries who helped out tonight. Without all of you, this contest could not have taken place. Judges, you had a horrific job. Horrific. I don't envy any one of you. What exceptional contestants we had. And therefore, I just want to say to you contestants, congratulations on a job well done, each and every one of you. I don't care whether you get first, second, third, or you don't go home with the trophy at all. Each and every one of you are a winner, and you proved it here tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. And one more time, uh, a round of applause for our Toastmaster. What a sharp wit, sir. Thank you. And unbeknownst to all of you, I had already given him his little handout award, so <laughs> I knew he would do a great job. All right, with that said, I hate to be the big meanie, but I have to do this. The third place trophy for the speech evaluation contest is put to the side because for a third place trophy there has to be a minimum of five contestants. Since we only had four contestants, we will only have a first and second place winner. Winner of the second place award for the speech evaluation contest, Stephanie Williams. Congratulations, very well done. No chance to do a drum roll or maybe a stomping of the feet, not on carpet. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the West Division Speech Evaluation Contest, Mr. Kyle Knapp. of the contestants I know that as Toastmasters we have to watch our language but I'm sorry I about peed in my pants every single time <laughs> you all five of you were awesome all five of you were awesome thank you, thank you. difficult decision for the judges here's how they decided it our third place winner Mr. Kyle Knapp. Our second place winner, Mr. Steve Servi. Drumroll, please. The West Division winner of the Humorous Speech Contest. The picture perfect, Ms. Beth O'Donnell. One more reminder, the district contest is September, I'm sorry, is, uh, this is September, yes, I'm sorry, yes, sorry, we're in September. In November 15th, the speech evaluation contest will begin at 9 a.m., and the humorous speech contest will begin at 4 p.m. With that, contest adjourned. 
Thank you all for coming.